If you'll stand with me just in honor and reverence to the reading of God's holy and air, infallible word. Matthew chapter 3, we'll read verses 16 and, verses, and verse 17. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Let's pray. Father, this morning we come before you, Lord, just a vessel. Lord, we have no in it power of our own. Lord, it's all yours. Father, it's only through and by the power of your Spirit, God, that we can even move or live or have our being. And Lord, we put our trust totally in you this morning. Father, we pray that you'll reveal that God that you want to say in this congregation this morning. Father, we ask you to bless this word. And Lord, may it produce its fruit, God, is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And, and you can be seated. There's something in the makeup of mankind, in the heart of mankind, that seemingly draws man toward heaven or draws man toward heavenly things. And there's something in the heart of man that wants to try to figure out God, just the very concept of God. And there's a longing in our hearts to want to know Him. And there's a longing in our heart to, to want to have contact with, with God. And one thing I can tell you this morning that when we try to comprehend and understand God Himself, we have to understand, first of all, that we're dealing with basically what is a mystery. Paul speaks about the mystery of God. The Godhead, the, the Godhead itself is mysterious because of the way, because of who we are. I really feel that it's not so much God Himself, but it's who we are and our, our ability to think and our mind and God's made us free moral agents. He's made us free to do whatsoever we choose, whatsoever our mind puts together and think we can do that because that's just how God made us. He made us different from the other creations He did. He made us with the power and ability to choose. And at the same time, He has so desired a relationship to His creation because man, as we find in the Bible, mankind is the apple of God's eye. The Lord desires a relationship with you more than you desire a relationship with Him. He, he desires to, to you to know Him and He's provided a way for us to know Him and know Him in the fullness and to really, and really come to, the, to, to, to a full knowledge of Him. We read in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, Paul tells us, and it's written in, 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 in the prophecy also, that I have not seen neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. In other words, but then he also tells us in verse 10, but God, now notice this, here's what I want you to understand, but God has revealed them to us, how? By his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. Now, if there's one thing the spirit of God knows, it is the deep things of God. And I know that passage of scripture, that, uh, that prophecy uh, has been used and I've heard preachers preach it and then say it that eyes not seen, ears not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for us and they'll stop right there. Well, the apostle Paul seemed to go a little further. He says, but God has revealed them to us. So here's the apostle Paul understands this. The Apostle Paul understands there should be no mystery about God in your heart and your life anymore. There should, be, there should be no problem in you serving God and being an obedient servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, being that obedient that you're one with Him because the Spirit of God has indwelled you. And I really feel that as we learn of the Holy Spirit and we know more of the Holy Spirit and understand that He is the one who is going to show us and reveal to us the deep things of God, then there's a, a possibility and a desire on God's heart to be everything He wants to be in you. I'm reminded just now in my mind of what Paul said in, in, in uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, when he revealed the mystery of all ages 
And Paul says it in seven words. He says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so how does Christ come into you? There's only possible way that Christ can come in, in you and live through you is by and through the Holy Spirit of God. John 14, verse 16. He, Jesus says this. He's getting ready to go to the cross now. He said, he said in verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. This is what he told the, the disciples there, the, the apostles there. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I would say to you this morning, if you love Jesus, keep his commandments. Just wait. If you love him, prove it to him. Keep his commandments. You know, a lot of the problem in the church world today may be because we're not keeping the commandments of Jesus. It could be, see, now notice, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus said, notice what he did. I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter. That he will give you another comforter. In other words, Jesus was a comfort to the, to the people. He, he was a comforter. He kept them. He, about, he said, I'm... I'm I'm going to go away. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Notice in the first verse of chapter 14, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. I'm encouraging you here this morning. Let not your heart be troubled. Jesus said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. In other words, believe in Jesus. That's what he was encouraging them to do. Believe in Jesus. And you see, Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit is one wanting to live in you and be your guide and be your God and be your Lord and be the strength and power of this life. But until we realize and know that, we're, we're just, it's almost like we're tying the hands of God because it requires faith for you and I to be able to carry forth. Look at it, he says, he says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter to be with you forever. Notice how long. Notice, that he may abide with you forever. In other words, take up his abode. Take up his abode. How many Christians today realize that the Holy Spirit of God is God and he abides in them? Boy, I tell you, that, that, that blows our mind away. We don't, we don't look at it like that. We, we, we agonize with God sometimes when really he's right inside, he's right here. Do you know a, a person who is really into the Lord Jesus has grown up into the head and is, has the Holy Spirit directed and leading their life? Do you realize that that person should not be praying a whole lot asking God what his will is? Does that shock some of you? Let me tell you why. Because if you're living in unity and harmony with the Holy Spirit, you're led by the Spirit of God, do you realize that everything you do is gonna be God, the will of God? Because you're being guided by his Spirit. And in a sense, we're just confusing and making matters worse in our mind when we're down trying to seek and find God's will. No, I need to get right with God, be obedient, have a willing heart, and trust God, and let the Holy Spirit do His work in me and through me. And then, then we are, then we are the very, the very will of God in that sense. Notice what He says in verse 17 here, the next verse here in John chapter 14. Even, he says, abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Why can the world not receive? Because they don't see him, neither don't know him. They don't see him, they don't know him. But ye know him. Now notice, this, this, notice what he says here. But ye know him. Talking about there again, now we're talking about his person. You, who does he, who you know? You know the Holy Spirit. You've already, you, you see, he's been with you. See, these apostles have been out, went out two by two. These disciples had already been casting out demons and doing all the healing. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was with them. They had already been operating under the Holy Spirit. The Lord had already told them to receive the Spirit of, of, the Spirit of God after he breathed on them. They had already experienced that. And he says, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall, he says, and shall be in you. So here's what we see. The Holy Spirit as, the, as, as God is your comforter. Why do you go through all this agony? Why do you let all these worldly troubles bother you? Why do you let the cares of this life weight you down? Do you not have God as your comforter? The only reason you would let cares of this life weight you down 
trouble you, cause you to gnaw your fingernails to the bone and worry, worry, worry like you do is simply because you don't have faith enough to believe that God is your comforter through the power of the Holy Spirit of God. I want to put you on notice this morning, whether you realize it or not, you have a comforter. And if you have Jesus, you've received him Lord and Savior. If you've been born again of God's Spirit, which you must be in order to be saved, there's a comforter. And all this worrying you go through with is your own fault. It's not God's fault. Because the Holy Spirit has fixed it for you. You put your trust in God and he is a comforter. No matter what you have to go through with, God comforts you during that. Let me remind you, was he not with Daniel in the lion's den? Was he not with the three Hebrew children in the, in the fire? I'm telling you, he's your comfort. You have to receive him, you have to claim him as your comfort. No matter what life throws you, the comforter, he indwells you. My goodness, it's just the Lord, it's your responsibility. Lord, here's this load. Here's this thing I gotta deal with. Lord, it's your responsibility. And leave it at the feet of the Lord. Because he is God, he is able to handle it. So you see, he's comforter. And I want you to notice here in verse 17, he plainly says, and shall be in you. I want to ask you this question. When did the Spirit of God come into you? Now, if you're not sure the Holy Ghost has ever come into you, you need to settle that. That needs to be an issue you need to deal with. Because you, you must have the Spirit of God if you plan on going to heaven. Because without the Spirit of God, you're none of His. That's, that's plain. Scripture's plain there. Look in verse 26 of chapter 14. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So here's what you have. Now notice I'm trying, I'm trying to show us what we've got. We've got a Comforter so the life's care shouldn't worry us. Now then we've got all this other stuff. We've got evolution to fight. We've got all, the, all these uh, problems of the world. We've got all this modern science age and all this kind of stuff we're facing, trying to tear down the word of God and all this. But here, what did Jesus say? Jesus said that he shall teach you. Who shall teach you? The Holy Spirit shall teach you. Shall teach you what? He, he'll, he'll teach you and he'll bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. So here, here's what you have. You have the Holy Spirit as a teacher. Are you troubled this morning? Are you worried about this, that, and the other? Well, it's a matter of me being right with God, being in communion with Him, and spending time before Him in prayer. I, I really believe that the, the, the weak spot in American Christians today is that we pray little mamby-pamby prayers, we spend a little bit of time, bless me and my four, and then we don't really spend time with God. And spending time with God in communion with God is where God, through the Holy Spirit, enlightens and, and reveals to us the deep things of God. Because we've already seen there in Corinthians, Paul said that he has revealed them to us. How? By his Spirit, the deep things of God. John 16, 13. Notice, notice, what, notice what Jesus says here. He says, how be it? When he the Spirit of Truth, talking about the Holy Ghost. When He, the Spirit of Truth, has come, He will guide you. He will guide you into all truth. You say, but I'm worried about getting off on the wrong trail. Not if you're in tune with God, you won't. The Holy Spirit is there to guide you into all truth. There'll be something inside you show you. There'll be a little alarm bell go off. There'll be something go on to show you, keep you in truth. So you see, the Holy Spirit, he'll, he'll guide us into all truth. Here's why, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he hears, what's he hearing? He's hearing the voice of God the Father. And he's relating the voice of God the Father to you, showing you, telling you the truth, telling you, guiding you into truth, leading you. How else could I find my way through this, through this, maze that we're in here in human population and all the mankind's thoughts if, if it were not for the guiding and the leadership of the Holy Ghost. How can it be if that unseen hand that we sang about a while ago was not guiding and leading us? Church, I want us to put you on notice that we are, we just sometimes we're not aware 
of how the Holy Spirit is really working in the heart and life of true believers of God. A verse of scripture that comes to my mind that Jesus spoke, he said that when he returns to earth, will he find faith on the earth? Boy, that thing has really jarred me. I, I really and truly has jarred me to the core. Jesus himself said, when I return, will I find faith on the earth? Jesus told us in Matthew, there in the Sermon on the Mount, when he, he said that straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. And I'm telling you this morning, church, this Holy Spirit that I'm talking about, this connection for, man, for, for mankind to God is that narrow way. It is that way. Because without the Spirit, you're none of His. Why do we act so human? Because we do not rely on the Spirit. Why is it that we walk in the flesh so much? Because we're not walking in, in the Spirit. Paul said, if we walk in the Spirit, which requires some effort. Do you know, when I walk, that, and I have to make a conscious decision, I'm going to walk. By the way, I'm going to come down these steps and walk right here. I made a decision. I did it. I'm going to walk all the way across here. I'm walking. Why? I'm making conscious decision. Jesus, Jesus through the Apostle Paul, told us if we will walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, why is it that men, women, boys, and girls walk in the flesh so much today? Because they will not heed and will not listen to the Spirit of God. The Lord is guiding us and leading us. That's what he's here for. He's comforter. He'll lead us into all truth. Here, Are we willing? Is it something that we are choosing to do? Something that we want to do? Sometimes, I'm afraid that that's what we choose, that we, cho that we choose not to do. And we go ahead and just do the things. Oh, it'll be okay. No, let me tell you. You are grieving the Holy Spirit of God. And probably the reason why you don't see any more of the power of God working in your life is because of that fact there, because we are not being obedient. The second point I want us to learn, the second truth about what the Bible reveals is that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is God. Listen, I want you to know, you can't divide God. You can't divide God. We speak of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't, don't try to divide God. And at the same time, don't try to crowd him together either. And that's a great mystery. Only the Spirit can reveal and give you an understanding of how you view the Godhead. Only God's Spirit can do that. There's people who make a, a, a whole denomination on how they view the Godhead. And I have looked at it from cover to cover. I've looked at it every which way I can turn it and tried to discern it and all that kind of, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing people who are truly, truly born again, they're saying the same thing with different words. They're seeing the same thing, but have the English language, they say it in different forms. God is able, and he's bringing us into himself. See, the Holy Spirit is God. He's not just a creation that God has made. He is God. See, his spirit has done so many things. You know, Let's look, if you will, again in, in Corinthians. Look with me. Look with me in verse, uh, verse 12 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. See, we've just read earlier that Christ come into us. He says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. You see that? We have received the spirit, not of the world, but that which is of God. We have received of God's spirit that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. God has freely given these things to us. Which things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now look at verse 14. Here's the point I want you to see. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. There's the key to the understanding. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritual, they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself with no man. Paul says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? And Paul makes this great statement. But we have the mind of Christ. I'm asking you this morning, do you realize 
that you have the mind of Christ if you've been saved and you've been born of God's Spirit. And I know that's a tough one for you. It's a tough one for me. Because as I walk through this earth and all that kind of stuff, the Holy Spirit is leading and directing and guiding me, comforting me, teaching me, leading me into all truths till, till that in me should be, I should have formulated the mind of Christ, grown up into him. So can you see how the Lord Jesus is bringing us, how he's bringing us closer to him? In conclusion this morning, let me just make this comment. It's clear through scripture that God wants us to have deeper knowledge of him than what we have now. He wants us to have a deeper knowledge. He wants us to know how to fight the good fight. Can you get with me just a moment? In John 20, verse 21, here's, here's, what, here's, what, Jesus, here's what Jesus said to those he had arose from the grave and he, he getting ready to go back to heaven. But here's what he says in verse 21. Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Now what did Jesus say to the, to, to, to the disciples here? Even as the Father sent me, so I send you. Now here's what the Holy Spirit is saying to you and I today. We're saved, and we're, we're saved to be what? We're saved to be servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, slaves of God. So here's what I want you to understand. The Holy Spirit is saying to you, I have sent you. You, 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 have been, you have been sent. Jesus said to the disciples, peace be unto you. As my Father, in other words, the same way the Father sent me, so I send you. Now, you and I have been sent in that same, in, in, in that same, in that same way. Notice in verse 22, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. That's why I'm saying to you the importance of the Holy Spirit. You have to realize it's not through your ingenuity. It's by and through the mighty presence and power of the Holy Spirit of God that these things are going to take place. Another point I want you to remember is this. Jesus, the Spirit of God rested upon him. We saw that clearly in our text today. There's a prophecy over in Isaiah that says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives. This is repeated again in Luke 4.18. That's what Jesus said. When he stood up and read there in the synagogue, he read that verse of scripture. He said, today you've seen this fulfilled. The Spirit was upon Jesus and Jesus realized that he had been sent to preach the good news. He gave it, and he passed this on to the church. When the Holy Spirit returned on the day of Pentecost, gave to the church, that commission goes right on over to the church. I want you as a child of God today to realize that your duty is to preach the gospel to the poor. Proclaim it to the brokenhearted. Let other people in this life learn of the word of God. And to be saved by the marvelous grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when the Holy Spirit came into your heart and life, as he guides you and teaches you and leads you, that's the same conclusion you're going to come to. And the same Spirit that rested upon the apostles, the same Spirit that rested upon Jesus, is the same Spirit that now is my comforter, is your comforter. He has indwelled your spirit with his spirit. He has endued you with power from on high. How many of you have really received that and by faith has accepted it? You know how this spirit comes upon you? You know, you know how this spirit is used in your life? It's used by faith. Just like you claim salvation through the name of Jesus, the blood of the cross, the, the power to live this Christian life is in the same fashion. And here's what I'm gonna to say to you this morning. You don't get one without the other. You don't get one without the other. You can't just be saved and live any other way you want to. That's, that so flies up in the face of Scripture. No, people who are led by the Spirit of God obeys God. The people who are led by the Spirit of God, Paul tells us in Romans, they are the sons of God. 
Paul also tells us in, in chapter 8 of Romans that if, you, that if you're not led by the Spirit of God, you have, if you have not the Spirit of Christ, now notice, here, here Paul is linking the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Christ as being the same one, which it is, because God is one. You can't divide God. God is one. If you're without the Spirit of Christ, we are none of His. And if we have the Spirit of Christ, what do we have? He, we have the ability to be comforted. The reason why we're not comforted is because we don't take it to Jesus. The reason why we don't walk in faith and strength is because we really don't believe it. We just, we're just hoping maybe when I get to heaven, I'm going to start living right. No, you're not going to get to heaven like that. You're going to get to heaven because you're obedient and you're filled with the Spirit of God and you're walking with God. Amen. Stand with me.